Welcome to the webinar, Strategic Planning When You Can't Afford it. My name is Courtney Brown, and I'm the South I'll be the host and question moderator today. Our presenter this afternoon is Michelle Stricker, Deputy State Librarian of Lifelong Learning from the New Jersey State Library. I'd like to start off the webinar with a few announcements. To register for other webinars or trainings available from the Professional Development Office, please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov library. For a full list of our current in-person training menu, please see our The Indiana State Library has many ways we try to stay connected to library staff across the state. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to our weekly e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word. We also offer a blog which provides information about the Indiana State Collection, interview spotlights on library staff from across the state, and information about upcoming events at the Indiana State Library. If you have a question during the presentation, just type it in the chat box on the upper left side of the screen. I'll be watching and I'll get your questions to Michelle as soon as there's a good opportunity. And there should also be some time near the end for questions. This session is about an hour, so you'll get one LEU for today. After the presentation has ended, please stay logged in to receive your LEU. I'll also be posting a link to a survey about the presentation. Please fill out the survey and let us know how we're doing. So again, please stay logged in at the end of the presentation to access your LEU and the survey link. If you're watching an archived recording of this webinar, instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description. If at any point during the webinar you experience any sound issues, please see the sound issues box just below the chat box on the left side of the screen. If there's a global sound issue, we will announce it in the chat box. If you're unable to resolve the sound issues you're experiencing, we are recording the meeting and you can watch it online after the meeting has ended. So again, if there is a global sound issue, we will announce it in the chat box. So without further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Michelle. Thank you, Courtney. And can you just let me know one more time that you can hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. you sound great. Okay, great, great, thank you. Well. Thank you again, and thank you to the Indiana State Library for having me on today. And welcome to Strategic Planning When You Can't Afford a Consultant. So this is a very popular topic here in New Jersey where a strategic plan is recommended by the State Library, but it's not required of libraries in our state. Um, and I assume it's a popular topic for most libraries since I've now I've given this presentation to a number of states and so you're next in line and I have another one coming up for Texas so I'm going to be doing this for Texas in October. So here's what I want you to learn in this presentation. That is why your library should be doing a long-range plan or a, also known as a strategic plan and I want you to learn about a simple format um, for you to do that and that's going to include a list of tasks for you to do, including how to delegate um, pieces of the strategic plan, uh, what the library director needs to do to get a, a strategic plan going, what the library trustees or board of uh, directors needs to do. We're going to review the basic elements of all strategic plans, and that's going to include a mission statement, a, a vision statement, community analysis, goals and strategies, budgets, timelines and evaluations, and also how to promote the plan. And then finally, I'm going to send you off with plenty of resources, and as well as my email and phone number. Uh, if any of you have any follow-up questions, you can feel free to contact me. Strategic planning is recommended for every library, big and small, and there is no need to fear it especially when I show you how you can break it down into small chunks and small tasks so that you can take it piece by piece and be ready to put it all together into a final, a final result. 
So what does, why does your library need a strategic plan? Because, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to end up somewhere else. And now's a good time to tell you about my obsession with New Jersey native Yogi Berra. Yogi uh, was a baseball catcher, manager, and coach who played 18 seasons for the New York Yankees. Uh, he lived in Montclair, New Jersey, and there's a Yogi Berra Museum on Montclair State University, which I have visited. Um, but perhaps he's even more famous for his yogiisms, these cheerful double takes on teachings that are both witty and profound, and I'll bet you're all familiar with some of them. Yogi has been called the Zenist master of them all, stating the truth in a hilarious manner, and I thought that a lot of his yogiisms were particularly apropos for the strategic planning process. Um, maybe some of you have even seen him on the right-hand side there in the Affleck commercials in which he drives that Affleck duck a little bit crazy. Libraries cannot keep doing what they've always done and expect to survive, let alone flourish. Strategic planning begins with a hard look at the present and then includes a study of future trends that lead to a discussion of ways your library will address these challenges. As you create the plan, you will get an overall picture of your library, its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and ongoing projects and services. You'll also look at your community to see who they are, who uses the library, and more importantly, who doesn't use the library. What needs do they have that aren't being fulfilled? Yes, it takes a lot of work, research, and organization. About three to four months to finish a plan on your own. You don't want to let the planning process go on longer than that, otherwise you're going to have to start all over again. But it's a great opportunity for you to look ahead for solutions to long-range needs and expectations. Strategic planning really is a management tool to determine the library's mission, vision, and goals to chart and shape the library's future. It gets your head out of the weeds so that you can see the big picture down the line. It lets you and your library be proactive rather than reactive and in a panic all the time trying to latch on to all these new trends that seem to come out daily and that we, I think, in the field tend to like chase after, um, sometimes to our detriment. So now I'm going to tear apart the elements of a basic strategic plan. And it's always a question of, you know, where do you begin? So let's start with the organization and the delegation of tasks. I'm going to assume that the library director is the lead organizer here because that's really going to be true in the majority of cases. If you're the director, then your tasks are going to be to educate your trustees, to help formulate a process to work with your committee and your planning team to help with the research to show the committee and your trustees examples of successful plans to help sell, set goals, strategies, and priorities for the library to collaborate and to actually write the plan suggest action items to achieve goals and to manage the library and your library staff uh, to support the plan. So like right off the bat, okay, and that's no yogi pun intended, you're going to have to appoint a planning committee. And that needs to include you or the director, the trustees, selected staff members, maybe the head of your friends group, and a variety of different community members. And, and not the ones that are already using the library. You need to go out and find the ones who are not using the library. And you know, let me just stop here for a minute and say that I do recommend that if you have any funding at all, that you do hire a facilitator because a facilitator has an objective viewpoint and keeps everything running smoothly. And I know this is strategic planning without hiring a professional, and that's really what I am going to teach you here. Um, however, you will find that if you even have a little bit of money to conduct the research part of things, it will just move things along faster. Not necessary, but you know, it would help you move along a little bit faster to get everything done. 
So this is what uh, really the director has to do um, in, the fir in the last slide. And on this slide, we're going to talk about what the role of the trustees or the board of directors, what are their responsibilities. Well, they're going to have to figure out how the work on the plan is going to get done. After all, if you're the director, you're going to have a lot of other things to do. Um, and they're going to have to be willing to allow you and some of your staff to take time off from your regular responsibilities in order to work on something different, namely the strategic plan. They also need to be very involved and serve uh, on the information gathering committee. They need to support community involvement. They need to help determine the goals, objectives, and priorities. They need to collaborate with the director to help you write the plan. It's not just you doing it alone. And they need to review the plan regularly and evaluate uh, what progress is being made to work towards a completion. Really in New Jersey, and probably I suspect for you know any other state, it's really the trustee's job to do the strategic plan as part of the roles of a, of a library trustee. At least that's the way we teach it here uh, in New Jersey. However, in all honesty, the trustees are going to be looking to the library director for advice to organize, to gather all the information, and to really put it all together, albeit with a lot of their input. You are going to be the point person for them. So I just want to let you know that you know a lot of this has been done already, and that the New Jersey State Library has a lot of strategic planning resources on our website that we can share with you. And these include a variety of presentations, templates, best practices, so really, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. These are all free, and they're readily available for you to use. And you'll have this slide that you can just go to the um, you can just go to that link on the top of the page. And every everything here is a hyperlink, so you could uh, you know take what you need out of there. As your committee is ready to begin to formulate a strategic plan, I want to remind you of one thing and, and keep it foremost in your mind. It's not your library, it's theirs. The library is a community anchor, it's an essential service, and as such, it belongs to the community. Your job is to engage the community and make your library reflect the community, and every community is different. Strategic planning reminds you whom you serve, what different demographic groups and interest groups there are in your community, and there are many that you've never even thought of. What needs do they have that your library could fulfill? Because this is the most important part of a strategic plan, you have to do a lot of field research, meaning you have to get out of the office and out of your building. The results of that research forces you to ask some tough questions. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? For whom? Is it really what our community wants and is it really what our community needs? Is it sustainable? What should we do different in the future? I'm not going to really give you one strategic format uh, or template today. You can find so many samples online or in any number of books through ALA, Web Junction, any of those type of um, websites. And what I would recommend is that you just select a template that you like best or that you think will work best for your library. Or you can totally create one on your own. Uh, for a small library, strategic plans are 25 pages or less. I've seen ones that really cover ground, to cover all the ground in 10 to 15 pages. So there's no need for you to think you've got to write this huge missive if you're a small library. However, you know, not giving you a specific example, I will say that every strategic plan will have to have the following elements, and that is a vision statement, a mission statement, um, an analysis section. Uh, you need your goals and your strategies that are going to be laid out year to year, a budget, and a timeline so you can track your uh, progression towards completion of your goals, and then uh, a final evaluation of the plan. And I'm going to break all of these down in, in, uh, in the slides that are coming next.
A strategic plan helps to clarify your library's vision and mission, and it gives you the tools and instruments to actually put your plans into action. But where do you start putting pen to paper? How do you start writing a, a strategic plan? Well, it's always best to start with a vision and a mission statement for your library. So let's first tackle the vision statement. The vision statement focuses on what your library will be in the next decade. It sets out long-term targets. It's supposed to invigorate and challenge, and it's focused on what the customer needs. So need I say keep it short and readable? No one wants to read an entire page of a vision statement, no matter how visionary. You want to keep it short. Our vision is to be the community's best source for inspiration, knowledge, ideas. Bang, you're done. Uh, the Anytown Public Library will be the integral physical and virtual gateway by which our broad and diverse community may gain access to information. Done. Um, keep it one or two sentences, keep it short, keep it punchy. And that will be your vision statement. Trying to advance here, it's going to be a little hard time. There you go. So next comes your mission statement. And really this, think of this as your purpose statement. It's your reason for existing. It's whom do you serve? What are you trying to accomplish? What roles do you play in the lives of your customers and in your community? Who are we as a library? What do we do and where are we headed? Again, Keep it short. We link people to the world, transforming lives, enriching neighborhoods, and preserving history. People tend to get confused between the vision and the mission statement, so you can refer back to the slides, and I hope I've kind of simplified it for you here. Next, we come to the most important part of a strategic plan, and it's the part that everybody wants to skip, but you can't. Uh, it's a part that really requires the most work. It's simply not a real strategic plan without information gathering and analysis from the community. You have to find out who's not using your library and why. What do they need that you're not providing? And this is where you need to seek the people, seek out the people who don't use your library. Uh, these are the community gatekeepers. You can find them at senior centers. Uh, you need to find the differently abled, the homebound, the folks in ethnic uh, pockets or neighborhoods. These are all the people who may not be using your library, and you have to find out where they are, and you're going to have to go to them. Uh, again, you can refer to the New Jersey State Library's website for resources on how to make contacts out in your community. And there's also a variety of targeted scripts um, that you could read for including different demographic groups in your planning processes, just in, just in case you, like, you might feel a little bit uh, uneasy or nervous about what exactly you're going to say either in person or on the phone when you're trying to gather and have a community forum about the library. You can also use um, the step-by-step -step guide from ALA called Turning Outward to Your Community. Uh, this was developed by the Harwood Institute for Public Innovation. Or the one that I really like the best is by the Aspen Institute that's called Rising to the Challenge, Re-Envisioning Public Libraries. This one, I think, I find it to be particularly clear, and I think it works really well for small libraries. It has a facilitator's guide for running public forums. That would be you. You would be the facilitator. And it also has an action guide. And both of these, uh, from Harwood Institute and Aspen Institute, they're both free. Uh, they're free to download. And at the very, in the very last slide, I've provided you um, the links uh, to these resources. So you can check them out, see if you might like uh, to use any or a combination of both of them in your information gathering uh, phase of your strategic plan. 
So there's a number of methods that you can use to gather information. Um, you could do a mail survey. You could do a you know an email online survey. You can make phone calls. You could hold community forums, and that means I'm talking forums out in the community, not at the library. And then you can target those forums, you know, by age, by demographics, whether it's seniors, teens, young professionals, ethnic, etc. Um, and you can also don't forget to survey your staff because. Not not all of them are going to be on the strategic planning committee, and yet they're going to want to have some input also into what they think the library needs to be doing um, in the future. So the results of your surveys are what guides your strategic plan and justifies why you want to move forward with a particular goal or goals. The research forces you to identify trends uh, and analyze your community. And you may have never done this before, or maybe somebody did it so long ago, again, uh, you know, in your town, that, um, you know, your town has completely changed over the last, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years or so. So uh, that's why you have to do it again, and you will have to do it every single time you start a brand new strategic plan. It's going to yield, you know, invaluable information to you every time you do it. And again, I put our resources up there and I just want you to look down where it says focus groups um, because you can see it ta talks about uh, there's links to how to organize a focus group, you know, how to recruit, and then you're going to see the sample discussion guides. You're going to see a few of the targeted audience guides. That's going to give you an actual script on how you're going to, you know, run these forums and meetings and uh, for different types of folks in your community. And so I think you'll find those very helpful. Once you've collected and you've analyzed your research, you can then begin to write your goals and your strategies. And here's another set of terms that are used together and are very often confusing, like that vision and mission statement. So I've tried to explain here, you know, basically the difference between them. The goals are the general statements about the library's directions and aspirations. You want to select goals that you can do in a, in a reasonable amount of time and that you could also, you know, judge them or get them done by interim steps along the way, sort of marching forward until, until you finally achieve that goal. And strategies or objectives are another word. Um, I like the word strategies, but you could take objectives, tactics, whatever you, you like the best. Uh, strategies are the steps that you take to reach those big goals. They set a framework uh, for the activities that you're going to be undertaking, and they should be, you know, rather short range and very practical, so that you're going to be able to, you know, give an evaluation of your progress towards those larger goals. You know, for you as a small library, I'm assuming like, you know, you're all fairly small libraries on the line, keep it simple. I mean, you, you're a small library, you probably have a small staff. Having three to five goals are plenty of go for a small library. I mean, I've seen libraries have pages of goals, and like, frankly, that would just like induce a panic attack in me if I, if I saw three, four, five five pages of goals that maybe add up to 15, 20, 25 goals, and I've actually seen that. Um, and that's fine if you're a large library, you have multiple departments with many people on staff, you know, maybe you want to have goals and strategies for each department. But for a small library, stick to three to five main goals, that's plenty to do in say a three to five year period um, for your library. talk about the budget now. Um, you have to have a realistic budget to cover the cost of things that you want to do. Um, whether it's, you know, you want to do more programming, whether you want to put in a new tech lab, you know, have a building addition, a new HVAC system, you want to hire more staff, say a children's library, li librarian, combination of all or any, any of the above. You need to plan out how you're going to pay for those things once you establish that they're needed in your goals. 
So again, you have to make sure that you have the money or know when you can get where you can get the money or know that your budget is going to increase or decrease over the next period of years so that the goals that you set out are going to be able to be covered in your budget. And your budget needs to be spread out over the life of the strategic plan. So again, it's not going to be all your money up front in your first year. You're going to budget these things out over a period of years so that it covers the, ex um, you know, the exact length of your strategic plan. And that's why most strategic plans these days um, are going to be for a period of three years. You know, that's, that's primarily due to like the rapidly changing technology. But as a small library, you may feel that three years just isn't enough time or it's just like too much to accomplish some of these big goals in three years. So you can stretch it out to five years. But that's it. A lot can happen in five years. Um, if you make it five years, you need to follow everything. Um, and then once that five years is ended or three years, whatever you decide is going to be the, the, the timeline for your plan, you, you actually do start over with a brand new plan. If it's three years, you go year to year, year uh, one to three, following your goals to completion and evaluation. But if you reach the end of whatever your plan is from 2018 to 2021, then your plan ends in 2021, and you need to go out and start all over again. Now, maybe a lot of things haven't changed. However, that research piece is really what's going to be the change. You're going to have to go out into the community again. Uh, for your community analysis, and again, that may it's going to come back and inform how your plan is going to change in the years to come. So you do need to set that timeline so you can um, systematically achieve your goals, and that's why you use benchmarks to check your progress along the way. You know, the benchmarks are going to allow you to readjust. If you, if you get off track, it's going to get you back off track. If you are back on track, I'm sorry, if you have to. And to do that, you're going to need to review the plan regularly and check it against the decisions and strategies you've made towards your goals and expenditures. You want to always track that together. You want to always make sure that you're on budget. Uh, you can never just, you know, you can never go off budget and start spending money that you don't have. And as a director, you should be reviewing the strategic plan on a monthly basis. Now, this doesn't mean you have to go into it in depth every month with everything else that you have to do, but you do need to take an hour or two every month just to pull it out, take a look at it, um, and see where you, you are. Um, you should meet with your planning committee and review the plan status about you know every quarter, every three months or so. And then at the end of a year, you, what you want to do is a one-page progress report. Nothing in depth, you know, you, you just want to let everyone know that this is where you stand. You're on track or you're not on track. Um, you know, this is what you've done for the year. Now, you can, of course, have longer capital range goals. Like, say you're going to be doing a new library building. Okay, uh, obviously you're not going to be able to do that in a three-year strategic plan. Mention needs to be made of it, but then if you're going to be doing some sort of capital planning and new building, um, it's mentioned in the strategic plan, but that requires its own capital plan, and that's something I'm not going to get into, but it's something that's different from a strategic plan. We also do have a sample capital plan um, on, our, on the New Jersey State Library's website website if you want to take a look at that and see how that's different. That's going to really include architects' plans and, and building materials and the costs and all of that stuff. So the final review, and by that, you know, what I mean by a final review is actually when you're finished writing the plan, the draft of the plan, and not the three to five years out when you're, you're make, making conclusions and you're ready to begin a new plan. I'm talking about the final review when you're done after the three to four months of writing the plan. Um, what you want to do before you, you know, 
finally review your work is you, you want to just put that plan away for a week and, and don't look at it. Because after working on this document for months, you know, it's easy to get so close uh, to the plan that you're going to miss some obvious flaws. So put it away for a while, take it out in a week later, and then ask yourself, did you, did you create the plan that you intended to create? You want to make sure that all your goals and strategies align with your vision statement and support the mission that you've outlined for your library. If there's any outliers, modify them or delete them. You want all of your energy focused on reaching your vision. Ask yourself, is your plan realistic? Can you do it? Make sure all the elements in your plan support each other. Over planning, as I said, is a common problem. Remember I mentioned like pages and pages of goals and objectives. Um, consider pushing some deadlines out further than you originally anticipated. Don't overload everything in year one and think that you're going to finish it. Spread those goals out over the life of your plan. Again, whether it's three years or whether it's five years. Don't do everything in year one. Is the plan complete? You know, identify any holes in your plan or potential activities that are unsupported. Ask yourself, is the plan clear and easy to follow? Remove all jargon. It's easy to write down an action item or a goal that makes sense in the moment, but making sure that the action makes sense in six months is crucial. Make sure that you monitor and check your progress along the way. The plan is, the strategic plan is really an action document and it's not meant to sit on a shelf gathering dust. You, dust ask yourself, you know, are your goals and objectives being achieved? Are they still realistic? Um, you know, are you achieving them according to your timelines that you specified? If not, why not? Do you need to change your deadlines? because of something working out or not working out. Um, do you have adequate resources, namely the money and the equipment and the training to achieve your goals? And should priorities be changed to uh, put more focus on achieving your goals? So a strategic plan really is a living document and changes can be made along the way, readjustments can be made as long as you provide justification for that. Okay, and I'm going to tell you more about that in a couple of slot in a couple of slides. It's a judgment call as to how often you review and monitor your strategic plan. Um, is there some extraordinary or rapid change coming from inside or outside of the library? Well, if so, then you need to monitor it monthly. Um, and then, as I mentioned, directors need to monitor do the monthly updates anyway. Um, the board of directors or your trustees should also see status updates no less than quarterly. So uh, by keeping tabs on monitoring the plan, it's going to ensure that this is still going to be a living document for you and that you're always going to be working towards your goals and completing your goals. So. And I want to throw you off here, but um, I'm going to talk about adaptive, what's called adaptive planning. So forget about everything I said about following your plan, kind of. You have to plan for disruptions in the life of your library, like, you know, funding challenges you didn't see coming. All of a sudden, you're cut by 50% one year for whatever reason um, or something happens where this phenomenal grant opportunity becomes available and if you don't drop everything and take advantage of it now it may never come your way again uh, for so for example in New Jersey this year uh, there was just um, a new construction bill passed at the end of last year first time in 20 years that there's going to be bond money available uh, to build new libraries, to upgrade, you know, library facilities. So all the libraries in the state have to, like, all of a sudden stop and say, is it time? Do we need to take advantage of this? If so, there's a lot of work required. I've got to put everything else aside. I've got to focus on this to make sure that I'm going to have a chance at that pool of money um, that I can, you know, upgrade my library. 
So funding challenges, grant opportunities that come out of the blue, you know, the next big thing you didn't see coming, you're going to want to be able to change that plan and modify it. And I know I've mentioned already the plan is a living, breathing document, and it has to be adapted so you can take advantage of opportunities that come along. So, you know, you may re need to regroup, you know, in times of crisis, all right? We, you know, we had here, again, there was a big interruption. We've had several, in, um, you know, weather disasters in the state. The last big one was... Uh, hurricane or Superstorm Sandy, but you know we have things that happen every year that cause major disruptions in libraries. You may have the same thing. It's going to have to. It's going to cause you to have to put that plan aside for one year, two years, three years, depending on whatever damage was done uh, in your facility. So I want to tell you that you know it's okay that that you deviate from the strategic plan. The plan is a guideline. It's not a strict roadmap that needs to be followed. However, if you do deviate from the plan for whatever reason, uh, be sure that some mechanism is identified for changing that plan if necessary. For example, if you need to change uh, one of the goals, you need to write down what is causing the, that change to be made. You know why are the cha why were the changes made, um, and the why is often different than what is causing the change. And um, the changes, you know, you have to like document them. What were, you know, uh, what was made. You've got to include the goals, the objectives, the responsibility, and timeline. So you've got to document the changes and all of those different parts of the plan. And then one good thing that you should do is you always want to keep copies of the old plan for reference. So as you go, you may go through a variety of iterations of the plan over the years. Always keep a copy of the old plan so you can see what changes that, that you've made to it. And last but not least, uh, strategic planning is a transparent process. You want everyone to see exactly what your library is doing uh, to keep up with community needs. And that's why you have to promote your plan when you're finished. You want to show everyone, as Yogi Berra says, the deep depth of your services. And rarely, when a plan is completed, do organizations really acknowledge the success they have achieved. I mean, it's a lot of work. Have your trustees show off the plan uh, before elected officials, uh, before service groups in the community, to the school board, the PTOs, and anyone else really they can think of in the community and highlight its potential for the community. People in your community, people, your elected officials are going to respond favorably when they see that a library uh, project is planned to improve services for all. Remember to celebrate your successes along the way because we're so often focused on the progress and with problem solving um, and we're always too eager to move on to the next version of, of the plan. Celebration is as important as accomplishing objectives and maybe, maybe even more so. Without a sense of closure, without a sense of acknowledgement of a job well done, uh, fulfillment that you get from, from, from getting this hard job done, your next planning cycle as you go right into it, it's just going to be an, an absolute grind. So you want to remember to take your celebration, celebrate with your staff, celebrate with your committee, uh, go before your elected officials, and celebrate that you've, you've done this, this great thing and it's going to mean great things for your community. So basically, that is sort of the end of the presentation other than to summarize and review with you uh, what we've gone over today. So I tried to discuss quickly an overview of strategic planning um, so that you can do it without hiring a paid consultant. We talked about the role of the director in organizing the strategic planning committee and the role of the board of trustees in the planning process. Um, I reviewed with you all the parts of a strategic plan that included the vision statement, a mission statement, goals and strategies, 
the importance of information gathering and of community analysis. And we reviewed, you know, what timelines and benchmarks and the difference between the two. We talked about the importance of a budget and uh, maintaining the budget throughout the plan and also the need for you to evaluate the plan as soon as um, about a week after or so after you give it a rest after you've written it you want to go back and evaluate it and make sure that the plan does what you you set out for it to do and then finally I've given you resources that you go to on the state libraries website and I've listed um, a few more here and here's where you'll see the Harwood Institute and the Aspen Institute links um, so you should really uh, go over those there are again there are toolkits in each of those that's just going to lay out a step-by-step -step process for you to do what's really the the hardest part of the plan and that is uh, uh, reaching out to the community, doing a, holding a number of forums, holding a number of community conversations to get feedback on what they want from your library. Um, and so that that's about it. And I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. I'm going to take a look in the chat box or Courtney. Um, you can feel free to, if I missed something, because I haven't really been looking in the left-hand side of the chat box, you can feel free to enter it now. Um, I'll wait a few minutes, but if not, if you don't have any questions, as Yogi said, I just want to thank everyone uh, for making this day necessary. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I am going to go ahead and put up... Uh, information on your LEU there. To download your LEU, you just need to click on the LEU certificate and then click on the button that says download file. There's also a survey link about the presentation. If you could please fill that out at your, um, let us just know how we're doing. And then at the bottom there is Michelle's contact information. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. If you think of later, feel free to reach out to Michelle. Like I said, her contact information is there at the bottom. Um, we will stay logged in here for a couple more minutes um, to see if anyone comes on with questions. Um, if not, um, we will log off. If you have any anything you think of later, like I said, just contact Michelle. Thanks, guys. Okay, I just will say one more time that um, I've given you a list of really everything that you need to have incorporated into a strategic plan. And as a small library, I can't stress enough um, to keep it as uh, simple as you can. Remember, three to five goals are plenty to do in a couple of years, three to five years. Um, and you don't need to write this big, uh, you know, sort of three ring binder plot factor, you know, 100 page plan, uh, not for a small library, really 10 to 15 pages um, that, uh, and you just like sort of, um, you know, you have each of your headings as I, I've given you in the first couple of slides, you can address that. I think the, the real meat again is going to come from your community analysis. That's going to be the largest part. Um, uh, of the plan and I think that that for you is going to be a small library that's going to be just a great guideline uh, for going ahead keeping it simple and uh, making some really extraordinary changes to your library without without feeling like you're totally overwhelmed and that you just can't keep up and that it's going to also keep you from just ch chasing trends that may mean nothing to your to your community.